Welcome to the Midweek Teas with me, Adele Onyango, where I share some random and not too random thoughts on things. And in this episode, let's talk about this ageism thing. Towards the end of my previous job as a radio presenter, I had tendered my resignation and my then CEO and I were having weekly meetings. He was trying to get me to stay at the company. I was kind of like, oh, one foot out, but also one foot in listening to what he was putting on the table. He would, in weekly meetings with him, present his plans for me. And he asked me in one of those meetings how old I was. I was just turning 30 at the time and I was working at the company's youth station. He was like, oh, you know, you're about to be 30 or just turned 30 and I've been thinking of moving you to our older station, etc. And he had this huge plan that he had thought out pretty well (laughs) about my career. And I remember just sitting there in his office in shock, just thinking like, why is this man planning my career with zero input from me? And so I remember first wondering about that. You know, he was making plans to move me, not even knowing if I wanted to stay there, not even knowing if that's something that I I wanted for my career. You know, that first thought kind of just brought the point home of the limited autonomy I had due to the fact that that just wasn't my company. But the second thought was my co-host at the time was in his 40s. So if this was really about age, he should have been transitioned ages ago, right? But it just goes to show how there's an imbalance when it comes to ageism. I'm not saying men don't experience it, but like huge imbalance to how heavy we get hit with it as women. The station and really media in general seem to present aging to women as this terrible thing that sabotages your career. Yet we have 74-year-old Rick Dees hosting a show that plays right here in Kenya and, you know, in different countries around the world. He's giving you current gossip, playing you current pop hits, So his audience is probably even half (laughs) or quarter his age. You know what I mean? Nobody's sitting there saying he's too old to be doing this, that or the other, you know. And it has always fascinated and shocked me how aging is held over our heads as women, as this monster to be fearful of, you know, hide your age, hide signs of aging, you know, and I've never fully grasped why. And my experience with age has been quite the opposite, you know, and you find this presentation of aging as this thing to be fearful of and shameful of, you know, the creams to hide wrinkles, the ambiguous birthday posts of like, oh, it's my birthday, but you can't really openly say your age, right? because of the blowback or how that could even affect your career and how your audience relates with you, the procedures to mask signs of aging, you know, and some of these procedures can even be fatal. So we're willing to risk that just to mask signs of aging. For me, I feel like losing my mom when I was 23 made me recognize how much of a privilege it is to age, you know, how much of a gift it is. When I look at even currently, I'm 35 now, my goal when it comes to fitness is not to mask signs of aging, but to help me not only be a lot more healthier currently, but for me to age healthily, you know, so that I can still have a level of agility that allows me to be as self-sufficient as possible as I age. So I bring this up because they are extreme and sometimes unhealthy fitness regimes that quite a few women are pushing themselves into, again, with the intent not to be healthy or to age healthily, but to mask signs of aging, you know? And I read this article of a woman saying when she was 14 years old, 
14, that's a teenager, like two years into teenagehood, right? She went into a beauty store and they offered her early prevention makeup, right? To prevent aging. Preventing aging at age 14 is wild. You haven't even sniffed 20. You haven't even sniffed 18. (laughs) And you're already being coached to be scared of aging and that aging is this thing to be so ashamed of that you need to start preparing to hide it from when you're 14. And like the standards of beauty for women is still really defined from the male gaze, from society's consumption of us, you know? For the longest, it was one definition that was the trend, right? So what was trendy was what was deemed beautiful. And it was through a male gaze And society will put out this one definition of beauty, which was more often than not what was trendy, quote unquote. So be it stick thin being trendy at the time, then the definition of beauty meant that you had to be stick thin. There are points where it was more curvy. There are points when if we pick on things like eyebrows, there was a point thick eyebrows were in. And there's a point, it's thin eyebrows, you know. Now, while these elements changed, what remained constant in this beauty definition that society set for women was age. So you could have the trendy thing, be it be stick thin, be it be curvy, be it your eyebrows should be a certain way, your lips, your nose, whatever. But the one thing that remained and remains constant is age you should be young. Beauty is presented as this thing. It's like this bottle of beauty fluid you're given when you're born and it goes running out the older you get, which is absolutely ridiculous, you know? And if you check it out, like the media constantly bombards us with imagery that tells us what looks good and who has value. And it is instilled in women to take advantage of like any possible product that will keep us suspended in this preserved state, right? So get a couple of early prevention Botox. Early prevention. It makes aging seem like this disease, you know? (laughs) Because honestly, like the last time and the only time I hear of early prevention is like in that tagline for breast cancer, which is like early prevention is the best detection. But here we are putting aging in the same bracket as actual diseases, like as a thing to be prevented. There's something else I came across, a product that I was like, I'm not sure this is wise, collagen gummies. And I was just like, why? And of course, the pack was to prevent It's, what do they call it? Anti-aging. What? (laughs) First and foremost, I feel like it's a bit futile to try and prevent aging because it's something that happens naturally. And I have found that as I age, the amount of freedom to be who I am increases incredibly. When I turned 30, it felt like there was a switch that was turned on and I wasn't as self-conscious anymore. I just just didn't give a fuck. I didn't feel like I needed to fit into any of society's definitions. And now I'm 35, five years in, that freedom has gone on increasing, right? Obviously, this requires self-work. This freedom doesn't just land on your laps. But seeing how it has increased for me over the last five years... I can't wait to unlock what freedom my 40s are going to bring. I also have a few older women I kick it with occasionally, and they do such a great job of just letting me know how beautiful it is to age. One is in her 40s, one 50s and one 60s. And two of these three women are divorced. Two are practicing the most unconventional motherhood, and I just admire the relationship they have with their kids. All of them are chasing their passions to the point that they've made the things they are most passionate about into careers, you know, and it's passions that they have fallen in love with and gone the extra mile to teach themselves how to do better all in their 50s and 60s. Like by that, I mean, they discovered this passion in their 50s and 
in their 50s, they started intentionally learning how to do this passion better, you know? And I share that because we also look at aging as this thing where life stops, you know? And if I haven't figured out what I'm passionate about in my 30s or in my 20s or in my 40s, then I'm doomed because I won't be able to do anything in my 50s. And that's just like a fucking lie. You you can. <laughs> you really can. It's just like your mindset, right? It's the mindset you need to have, which is difficult to have when you're constantly being conditioned to see aging as this thing to be, again, afraid of and ashamed of. And how we have made aging into this huge monster um, that we should fear and how we treat older people has resulted in us being coached to be scared of and dislike the elderly almost in equal measure, you know? There was a recent study where women between the age of 13 to 77, obviously the 13-year-olds are like girls, but they were asked what they feared about aging. I'm going to share four of the responses. One is, I'm scared about not being able to work as I get older and about society's ultimately throwing me away. Another person said, I'm terrified of ending up alone. Um, the other one says, I dread the feeling of becoming invisible. What if I never have sex again? Another said, I'm worried about losing my looks and feeling the pressure to have plastic surgery. So these are like fears that are real, but I think they exist. Yes, because they are elderly people who get shunned. That's for real, there is a way we shun old people who look old. So, of course, you will feel the pressure of like wanting to get plastic surgery. We do treat the elderly as less attractive. And so you wonder, will I get a partner? Will I still have sex? You know, because of all of these things. And I just feel like perhaps we should shift how we look at aging. Because honestly, it is a privilege. Not everybody gets the luxury to age, right? So I want to end this episode with about two quotes. The first is from Simone de Beauvoir from The Coming of Age. And the quote is, old age is not to be an absurd parody of our former life. That's just a wonderful way to look at aging, you know, not as this thing to look down on or like, yeah, absurd. And some of the healthy articles I have read look at things like wrinkles as proof that you have lived a full life, you know, gray hair as like packing all of these memories and experiences of a life lived, you know. And I just think that we need to reject a very one way of looking at beauty that limits women to the male gaze, to society's gaze, and presents aging as this thing to be petrified of. Because it also gives leeway to harmful products being marketed to young women, let alone all the anxiety that it gifts us as we do the natural thing that is aging. Another article I read by Ashley T, she says two things. One is that our fixation on looking youthful is not only a denial of womanhood, but a denial of women's humanity, which is the right to embrace the natural development process. And we're going to end with something she said that I thought was just so apt. How can I age gracefully if I'm scared to age at all. Thanks for listening to The Midweek Teas, a Legally Clueless Africa production. Episodes go out every Wednesday and you can learn more about us by going to legallycluelessafrica.com.